Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Donnie and in this video I am going to show you how to create an S-curve that shows the baseline or the target um, um, S-curve and the actual uh, S-curve. So this implies that my S-curve would have my target and it will also have my ongoing S-curve which is still ongoing, so that is why it's not yet uh, complete. So, to start, you have to make sure that you entered your data in MS Project correctly. So, after you put in the tasks in your Gantt chart, you have to, of course, put in your start date and end date, which are your targets okay, for the specific tasks. Now, one important uh, thing to do after you've entered all the start dates and the end dates is that you declare them as a baseline. So once you've entered everything, you set baseline and you have to click OK after you see this pop up, set baseline. So I will not click OK anymore because I already did that a while ago. So this is now set in the project as my target start and target finish okay and now that you've um, identified the target start and target finish you can then put in new columns for the actual start and the actual finish all right so you don't usually touch anymore the baseline start and the baseline finish because they were your targets what you modify is the actual start and the actual finish columns and here, I already uh, filled it out before I made this video because I don't want to consume time filling them out one by one. So I already have my baseline start, and baseline end, and actual start and actual finish all filled up. But take note that the actual start and the actual finish is not yet complete. So I still have entries here that are still NA, meaning they haven't started yet. Okay, It's still ongoing. So, one thing you have to uh, observe is what was the last task that is ongoing, in this case that is uh, finishing, because I have to figure out where that is in my report later on. And now that I have all the columns and I know uh, an important detail, I can now go to the report and then go to visual reports. This will produce a pop-up where you can um, generate reports. And I'm looking for baseline work report. And then I have to click edit template. So here in the edit template, I could add more fields or remove fields from the report that will be produced. So actually, there will be a lot of fields here that already added for you. But what you really need is still not yet added. So I need the baseline cumulative work. So click add. And also the cumulative actual work. So it's alphabetical. So you have to go to here and then add that as well. So you know that an S-curve is technically a report that shows the accumulated work, accumulated cost, etc. So you need cumulative data to be added in the report. And then click Edit Template in that pop-up. And MS Project will start loading in the report in a form of a cube. So it's technically a data source that it creates behind the scenes. And let's just wait for Excel to load. Oh, by the way, MS Project doesn't create S-curves. You have to download the data to Excel because it's Excel that will... Uh, create the S-curve for us. So as you can see here, I have Excel open. Okay, It will have the chart, which actually you cannot use yet. You have to still modify some things. You have to go to the Assignment Usage tab, which is where you will see a classic pivot table used by this chart. Okay, So we have to go to the pivot table and we have to remove the fields, the values that it added, because remember, we don't need the actual work. 
what we need is the baseline cumulative work. We don't need baseline work. And the uh, cumulative actual work. And check for anything that is not cumulative. So uh, this one as well, work. So I have the two cumulative columns added in my report. The next problem that you may always want to check is if you have anything recurring in your report, like a weekly meeting in my case. So I have to remove this one because I don't want them to be plotted in my S-curve. So I have to drop down, okay, filter the task from here. And then I have to toggle this downwards in order to remove the weekly meeting. They will sort of like disrupt my S-curve. So click OK. And the next part that I need to check is I have to look for which week the finishing, okay, the last task is in my S-curve. So I have to um, put in the weekly calendar filter here right above the tasks. And once you see, once you do that, you will see that the year has been added here. You will then click here under your project name and look for what um, week the finishing, the, the last ongoing project is found. So you have to drill down. So I know that in my report, it's part of the construction phase. So I will click construction phase here. And I could see that finishing is right there. So I have to find out what week okay, that finishing belongs. So I am now drilling down the year into quarter. And then I see here that finishing is started at week 44. Okay. So in week 43, it ended at the add roof, the last completed task. So it doesn't have finishing yet. And finishing is over here and it's week 44. That is important because I need to modify the data later. So now that I know what week that belongs to, that last task belongs to, so I could now um, co uh, collapse the task, the first task here, demo project one in my case. You do not have to collapse the week numbers anymore. You actually need them to be like that. So I'll also expand the quarter that I haven't expanded yet. And now I have the data that I need to transform into a an S-curve. So now I could copy okay, this report to another worksheet. And if you're wondering, shouldn't we just let the chart be as it is? If you go here, you could see that the S-curve is almost there, right? You just have to change chart type and show you that it's already an S-curve. But the problem is that the tasks that are not yet done is still plotted in my S-curve. And I really cannot delete this part because you cannot do that in pivot tables. You cannot delete data directly on the pivot table itself, nor... Okay, if you're familiar with Excel, technically you're, you're supposed to look for the data where the pivot table is coming from. But remember what I mentioned a while ago? It's, it doesn't really work that way. If uh, the, the key in pivot tables is you simply have to double click the last cell for the data source to show up. But as you could see here, Excel says you cannot do that. So the workaround is for you to copy the data okay and create a new worksheet and put the data there so take note how i ignored the year and the quarters i only copied from the weeks onwards all right now the next part is i have to remove this column b because it doesn't really contribute anything in my report okay and now i'm ready to create my pivot table or my S-curve. So I simply have to highlight the headers and the week. Okay, but before that, I think we have to remove this first. So I will remove the week 44 onwards because remember the project is not is still ongoing. It's still there. 
So, I have to highlight okay, these two columns now without the data here. And then insert. And then line chart. Okay. Oops. And there you go. So, I now have an S-curve that shows us the cumulative baseline work and the cumulative actual work. All right. So actually, the procedure is the same if you're trying to create a, 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 an, an S-curve that shows the baseline and the actual for completed projects. The only difference is that this one it will technically do. But if it's still ongoing, then you have to copy-paste the data in a different worksheet so that you can remove the weeks that are still ongoing. And that's it for today's video. I hope I helped you somehow. If you have any questions or any requests, please feel free to use the comment section and I will try to answer as soon as I can. Thank you and hope you like and subscribe. See you in the next video.